have enjoyed reading Wonder so far. It's one of my very favorite books to read aloud. And the last few years, Miss Rurik has read it to our fifth graders, which has been great. I'm happy to share. Um, but I'm not sad that I get to read it this year. So let's not waste any time and we'll get right back to it, shall we? So last time we read, um, Augie was, August was getting ready to tour what could be his new school. And he had met Mr. Tushman. So this chapter is called Nice Mrs. Garcia. We followed Mr. Tushman down a few hallways. There weren't a lot of people around, and the few people who were there didn't seem to notice me at all, though that may have been because they didn't see me. I sort of hid behind Mom as I walked. I know that sounds kind of babyish of me, but I wasn't feeling very brave right then. We ended up in a small room with the words Office of the Middle School Director on the door. Inside, there was a desk with a nice-seeming lady sitting behind it. This is Mrs. Garcia, said Mr. Tishman, and the lady smiled at Mom and took off her glasses and got up out of her chair. My mother shook her hand and said, Isabel Pullman, nice to meet you. And this is August, Mr. Tishman said. Mom kind of stepped to the side a bit so I would move forward. Then that thing happened that I've seen happen a million times before. When I looked up at her, Mrs. Garcia's eyes dropped for a second. It was so fast, no one else would have noticed, since the rest of her face stayed exactly the same. She was smiling a really shiny smile. Such a pleasure to meet you, August, she said, holding out her hand for me to shake. Hi, I said quietly, giving her my hand. But I didn't want to look at her face, so I kept staring at her glasses, which hung from a chain around her neck. Wow, what a firm grip, said Mrs. Garcia. Her hand was really warm. The kid's got a killer handshake, Mr. Tishman agreed, and everyone laughed above my head. You can call me Mrs. G, Mrs. Garcia said. I think she was talking to me, but I was looking at all the stuff on her desk now. That's what everyone calls me. Mrs. G, I forgot my combination. Mrs. G, I need a late pass. Mrs. G, I want to change my elective. Mrs. G is actually the one who runs the place, said Mr. Tishman, which again made all the grown-ups laugh. I'm here every morning by 7.30, Mrs. Garcia continued, still looking at me while I stared at her brown sandals with small purple flowers on the buckles. So if you ever need anything, August, I'm the one to ask, and you can ask me anything. Okay, I mumbled. Oh, look at that cute baby, Mom said, pointing to one of the photographs on Mrs. Garcia's bulletin board. Is he yours? No, my goodness, said Mrs. Garcia, smiling a big smile now that was totally different from her shiny smile. You just made my day. He's my grandson. What a cutie, said Mom, shaking her head. How old? Well, in that picture, he was five months old, I think. But he is big now, almost eight years old. Wow, said Mom, nodding and smiling. Well, he is absolutely beautiful. Thank you, said Mrs. Garcia, nodding like she was about to say something else about her grandson. But then all of a sudden her smile got a little smaller. We're all going to take very good care of August, she said to Mom, and I saw her give Mom's hand a little squeeze. I looked at Mom's face, and that's when I realized she was just as nervous as I was. I guess I liked Mrs. Garcia when she wasn't wearing her shiny smile. Jack Will, Julian, and Charlotte. We followed Mr. Tushman into a small room across from Mrs. Garcia's desk. He was talking as he closed the door to his office and sat down be behind his big desk, though I wasn't really paying much attention to what he was saying. I was looking around at all the things on his desk, cool stuff like a globe that floated in the air and a Rubik's type cube made with little mirrors. I liked his office a lot. I liked that there were all these neat little drawings and paintings by students on the walls, framed like they were important. Mom sat down in a chair in front of Mr. Tishman's desk, and even though there was another chair right next to hers, I decided to stand beside her. Why do you have your own room and Mrs. G doesn't, I said. You mean, why do I have an office? asked Mr. Tishman. You said she runs the place, I said. Oh, well, I was kind of kidding. Mrs. G is my assistant. Mr. Tishman is the director of the middle school, Mom explained. Do they call you Mr. T? I asked, which made him smile. Do you know who Mr. T is? He answered. I pity the fool, he said in a funny, tough voice like he was imitating someone. I had no idea what he was talking about. This is a picture of the actors in the show called The A-Team, 
which was a show that was popular when I was your age. This guy on the end is Mr. T. He was um, basically the bodyguard for these guys. And one of his favorite things to say was, I pity the fool. And you would have to be scared because if he pitied you, you were probably going to get beaten up pretty badly. So that is why Mr. Tishman laughs when, when Augie says, do they call you Mr. T? Because I don't know what Mr. Tishman looks like yet, but I bet it's not that. Anyway, no, said Mr. Tishman, shaking his head. No one calls me Mr. T, though I have a feeling I'm called a lot of other things I don't know about. Let's face it, a name like mine is not so easy to live with. You know what I mean? Here, I have to admit I totally laughed because I knew exactly what he meant. My mom and dad had a teacher called Miss Butt, I said. Hoggy, said Mom, but Mr. Tishman laughed. Now that's bad, said Mr. Tishman, shaking his head. I guess I shouldn't complain. Hey, so listen, August, here's what I thought we would do today. Is that a pumpkin? I said, pointing to a framed painting behind Mr. Tishman's desk. Augie, sweetie, don't interrupt, said Mom. You like it? said Mr. Tishman, turning around and looking at the painting. I do too, and I thought it was a pumpkin too, until the student who gave it to me explained that it is actually not a pumpkin. It is, are you ready for this, a portrait of me. Now, August, I ask you, do I really look that much like a pumpkin? No, I answered though I was thinking yes. Something about the way his cheeks puffed out when he smiled made him look like a jack-o'-lantern. Just as I thought that, it occurred to me how funny that was. Cheeks. Mr. Tishman. And I started laughing a little. I shook my head and covered my mouth with my hand. Mr. Tishman smiled like he could read my mind. I was about to say something else, but then all of a sudden I heard other voices outside the office. Kids' voices. I'm not exaggerating when I say this, but my heart literally started beating like I had just run the longest race in the world. The laughter I had inside just poured out of me. The thing is, when I was little, I never minded meeting new kids because all the kids I met were really little too. What's cool about really little kids is that they don't say stuff to try to hurt your feelings, even though sometimes they do say stuff that hurts your feelings. But they don't actually know what they're saying. Big kids, though, they know what they're saying, and that is definitely not fun for me. One of the reasons I grew my hair long last year was that I like how my bangs cover my eyes. It helps me block out the things I don't want to see. Mrs. Garcia knocked on the door and poked her head inside. They're here, Mr. Tishman, she said. Who's here? I said. Thanks, said Mr. Tishman to Mrs. Garcia. August, I thought it would be a good idea for you to meet some students who will be in your homeroom this year. I figure they could take you around the school a bit, show you the lay of the land, so to speak. I don't want to meet anyone, I said to Mom. Mr. Tishman was suddenly right in front of me, his hands on my shoulders. He leaned down and said very softly in my ear, It'll be okay, August. These are nice kids. I promise. You're going to be okay, Augie, Mom whispered with all her might. Before she could say anything else, Mr. Tushman opened the door to his office. Come on in, kids, he said, and in walked two boys and a girl. None of them looked over at me or Mom. They stood by the door looking straight at Mr. Tushman like their lives depended on it. Thanks so much for coming, guys, especially since school doesn't start until next month, said Mr. Tushman. Have you had a good summer? All of them nodded, but no one said anything. Great, great, said Mr. Tishman. So, guys, I wanted you to meet August, who's going to be a new student here this year. August, these guys have been students at Beecher Prep since kindergarten, though, of course, they were in the lower school building. But they know all the ins and outs of the middle school program. And since you're all in the same homeroom, I thought it would be nice if you got to know each other a little before school started, okay? So, kids, this is August. August, this is Jack Will. Jack Will looked at me and put out his hand. When I shook it, he kind of half smiled and said, Hey, and then looked down really fast. This is Julian, said Mr. Tishman. Hey, said Julian, and he did the exact same thing as Jack Will. Took my hand, forced a smile, and looked down fast. And Charlotte, said Mr. Tishman. 
Charlotte had the blondest hair I've ever seen. She didn't shake my hand, but gave me a quick little wave and smiled. Hi, August. Nice to meet you, she said. Hi, I said, looking down. She was wearing bright green Crocs. So, said Mr. Tushman, putting his hands together in kind of a slow clap, what I thought you guys could do is take August on a little tour of the school. Maybe you should start on the third floor. That's where your homeroom class is going to be. Room 301, I think. Mrs. G is room 301, Mrs. Garcia called out from the other room. Room 301, Mr. Tishman nodded. And then you can show August the science labs in the computer room, then work your way down to the library and the performance space on the second floor. Take him to the cafeteria, of course. Should we take him to the music room? Asked Julian. Good idea, yes, said Mr. Tishman. August, do you play any instruments? No, I said. It wasn't my favorite subject on account of the fact that I don't really have ears. Well, I do, but they don't look exactly like normal ears. Well, you may enjoy seeing the music room anyway, said Mr. Tishman. We have a very nice selection of percussion instruments. August, you've been wanting to learn to play the drums, Mom said, trying to get me to look at her but my eyes were covered by my bangs as I stared at a piece of old gum that was stuck to the bottom of Mr. Tishman's desk. Great. Okay, so why don't you guys get going, said Mr. Tishman. Just be back here in... He looked at Mom. Half an hour okay? I think Mom nodded. So is that okay with you, August? He asked me. I didn't answer. Is that okay, August? Mom repeated. I looked at her now. I wanted her to see how mad I was at her. But then I saw her face and just nodded. She seemed more scared than I was. The other kids had started out the door, so I followed them. See you soon, said Mom, her voice sounding a little higher than normal. I didn't answer her.